A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive part 42. Lagging the boiler barrel with heat insulation material and painting the boiler bands. Fitting the blowdown valve, then drilling some holes for the injector piping. A nice simple episode, or so I thought. I'm reusing the original lagging that was fitted to the engine, but it needed tidying up before I refitted it. This seems to be made from some metallic material with glass fibre in between the layers. Unfortunately, at both ends, the glass fibre was a bit of a mess, so I spent a little bit of time with a pair of scissors trimming the raggy ends of the lagging. Whenever I lag a boiler before fitting the outer cladding, I normally use some masking tape, as shown here, to hold the lagging in place. And this works fine, it holds it in place more than long enough to fit the outer cladding layers. I'm not saying this is the right or wrong method, it's just what I've done for many years. Time for a test fit with one of the pieces of boiler cladding. On this model locomotive, the cladding is made in two halves, both on the firebox and on the barrel. I've just put on one piece of barrel cladding to make sure it fits, and of course it does. This engine was built not as a saddle tank, but as a side tank engine. And on one of the pieces of cladding, there are some holes which take clips to hold the blower pipe in place. And here they are, clamped to a piece of scrap, 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter pipe. I need to clean and polish these, but I can't at the moment because the outer part of the workshop is in use. Once these are cleaned and polished up, they'll be fitted in the right place to support the blower pipe when I make it. This is the outer part of the workshop. I'm going to show you what I'm doing. The boiler bands that you can see sat on the bench are the bands that hold the barrel cladding in place. Originally, these boiler bands were painted black, and because the original paint was chipped, I thought it would be a good idea to blow them over with some HMG satin black, which is what I'm doing. I've got to be careful here because this is my last can of HMG satin black, and I do not want it to run out halfway through the job. Luckily, it didn't. I really do recommend this paint. I've got nothing to do with HMG paints. I just recommend good things. And for miniature locomotives, I do find this to be the best paint. Here is the usual shot of the paint drying in the outer part of the workshop. It's time now to revisit the inner part of the workshop and use some of this stuff, which is also very good. It's called Bondlock Hydraulic Seal B542. And it's very similar to the Loctite product that I use normally. In this clip, I'm applying some of this to the thread on the blowdown valve. Little did I know at this stage that it was going to be quite difficult to fit this blowdown valve underneath the boiler. I know where the boiler bush is underneath the boiler, and I know where the thread is on the actual blowdown valve fitting. The problem is, because of the shape of the blowdown valve, it's very difficult to spin it concentrically with the bush in the boiler. It's important to mention that this engine is very well supported and cannot fall on my hand. That would definitely not be fun. Once I started to tighten the fitting in the bush in the boiler, it became too difficult to turn by hand. So once again, I'm using a backhoe spanner. This is a narrow jaw backhoe spanner for no reason. It's just one that was nearest to the job. What seemed at first to be a very simple job took quite a long time to do. The first problem that I had when I tried to locate the fitting into the boiler was there was nothing in the middle of the fitting to allow me to grip it. Now it's a different problem. It's very difficult to rotate the fitting, even with the spanner. I needed to put a screwdriver through the hole in the end of the spanner as a lever. I also had to remove both of the water gauge blowdown pipes. And eventually I rotated the part into the correct position. It's tight in the bush and it has hydraulic sealant on the threads, so I'm hoping it's going to be okay. The next part of the job needs a little bit of thought. I need to fit an injector to this locomotive. Where am I going to put it? Underneath the footplate at the right hand side. Here's the injector. 
preferably as near to the edge of the foot plate as possible so that when you're driving the locomotive you'll be able to see the water running out or not running out as the case may be. There are three pipe connections on a normal live steam injector steam in, steam out and water in. Normally if you fit the injector close to the edge of the foot plate you don't need to fit an extension to the overflow pipe. I need to drill a hole through the foot plate for the steam pipe from the turret to go through to connect to the injector. But not here where the cross is, this would be entirely wrong. A better idea is to drill the hole at the other end and then extend the pipe underneath the foot plate back towards the injector. Here I'm trying to go through the plate in one go with a quarter of an inch diameter drill but it's no good. Instead I started off the hole with a 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter drill. Now I'm back to the quarter of an inch drill and it's going through the hole very well. And now a 5 sixteenths of an inch diameter drill. The finished size of the hole in the foot plate needs to be large enough to let a union nut for quarter inch pipe to go through the hole. This is not big enough yet. And to allow this to happen I used an even larger drill bit. After drilling the hole I cleared away all the swarf using the airline. It's much better than using your finger to do this because you don't get pieces of metal stuck in your finger. Here I'm deburring the edge of the hole from the top and then from underneath. I think the hole may need to be even bigger than this but I want to show you what I'm doing. Here's a rubber grommet that will fit into the hole and allow the quarter inch pipe through but I will fit the grommet onto the pipe before I silver solder the coned unions on the end of the pipe. There is a reason for using a grommet. If you don't use a grommet and the pipe just goes through the running board or in this case the cab floor due to vibration over time a pressure pipe could be worn through by rubbing against the steel. This pipe that you're looking at isn't a pressure pipe, it's just the exhaust pipe from the steam operated cylinder drains. The question is now, how do I mount the injector to make it solid? I don't just want it to dangle on the pipes. Plus the injector is going to be fed with water from the tender of the engine. The best way to do it I think is to drill a hole through the buffer beam and make a special fitting to attach the flexible pipe to and the other end will have a copper pipe which will support the injector. Drilling holes in metal with a handheld electric drill can be risky, I speak from experience. I was once drilling the holes through the roof of a sweet pea locomotive. With the electric drill set to the slowest speed, the drill grabbed, I was off balance and I twisted my back. I remember it being very painful. And ever since then, I always set the clutch on the drill to slip if the drill grabs. This is an old DeWalt drill and it's really good. I've had it for many years and it's done a lot of work. The buffer beam is quite a bit thicker than the cab floor, so it takes a bit longer to drill the hole. The principle is the same. I start off with the 3 16 drill, then I move up to a quarter, then up to 5 16 and then to the finished size, 3 8 the bigger the drill, the slower the speed, and I also use some lubricant. This is some 3 in 1 oil, and you notice I'm spraying the drill, not the work. This is the final size, 3 eighths of an inch, and in the end, I get a very clean hole through the buffer beam. And oddly enough, the drill started to stick as I withdrew it. Just as with the cab floor, after drilling the hole, I deburred it both sides, and then I wiped away all the oil using a cloth. I even used some solvent to make sure the buffer beam was clean because here I'm giving it a quick coating of the very nearly empty tin of HMG satin black paint. And as usual, here's the standard shot of the paint drying. That's it from me. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.